Honorable Shulei must go slow on her chest thumping and boisterous utterances against the people she considers anti-government. This is a government that has tendency of oppressing people. Political opinions, however diverse, will always be part of our life. And the Kenya Kwanza government must contend with that. Kenya needs a government that is sensitive to the plight of ordinary Kenyans. Citizens of this nation would expect. NHIF was riddled with corruption that led to billions of shillings in debt still owed to many private hospitals. All these years the government turned a blind eye as many hospitals went into financial crisis. The creation of Shah is believed to be a magic button that will solve our medical issues affecting Kenyans. We want to assert here that the new creation like Shah will never solve the problems that NHIF could not if systemic issues, management and corruption are not addressed. The scope of coverage of Shah medical benefits must also be commensurate with the member's subscription and anything less must be rejected. We demand a comprehensive medical policy that will include employment and remuneration of all our medical practitioners. Cancer is taking a toll of many Kenyans, young and old, and the government must think of a health policy and uh, implementation matrix that will facilitate all county referral hospitals with cancer treatment units at no cost at all. Let all public health facilities offer free medical services to all Kenyans. Just probably to add more concerns on Shah is the registration procedure we appreciate is electronic and people try while some are still struggling very much with registration and the payment of their monthly subscription. The unemployed are suffering most in the Shah and just recently I had access to a mother in Siaya who went for registration and the things that are asked is like how many chicken do you have, how many goats do you have, how many, is your house plastered. If your house was plastered 10 years ago and you are a widow, will you sell the house for you to pay the Shah? And that is what is determining what an, an, somebody who is not employed will be paying. So we pray that the government should think twice and get a verifiable method of getting what an individual who is not employed should be paying. Security is another big threat to our nation at as at now. People are being killed. People are being maimed. Women are being killed. The state of insecurity in this country is already alarming. Enough for rapid action. We propose that security services be devolved and country governments be directly in charge of security organs in their counties. Insecurity has affected freedom of movements, peace, economic life, and social fabric of our society so much so that one has either to live or to die. A state of this nature is reminiscence to a state of anarchy where some people have the power to decide on our destiny and on our lives. If only the amount of force that the government used to crush the youth uprising is anything to go by, then there is no excuse why the government and its intelligence department cannot apprehend the perpetrators of violence in our back yet. When we hear of women being sexually assaulted and murdered in the process, it calls into question two important issues. 
that is our morality as a society and the role of security intelligence. The challenge that we have is that at times we are facing, we are seeing elements of discrimination in intelligence where the targets are those who may be believed to be opposing the government instead of real criminals. We must change our focus and be sober enough to appreciate priorities of our nation. Political opinions, however diverse, will always be part of our life. And the Kenya Kwanzaa government must contend with that. Okay, I'm the Right Reverend C.S. John Mark Haung Godia from the Anglican Church Diocese of Maseno West within this region. We, as a church, always are asked to pray for the government. And whenever we pray, we don't just talk to God, but God also talks to us. But as we pray for this government, we continually call them to account on issues that affect the lives of Kenyans. We have mentioned a number of issues to those we now add the issue of corruption, where we believe that the Kenyan problem is not a resource problem. It is more of a management problem. God has put in Kenya resources that are enough for all of us. But the unfortunate part of it is the manner in which these things end up in the hands of a few Kenyan individuals in the political leadership through corruption. And it is a great pity that some leaders in this country can have the courage to criticize the Catholic bishops for speaking against corruption in Kenya. Anyone who insists that the church should not give out the evidence, that the church should give out the evidence against corrupt people in the government before it speaks has a major problem of denial. And we take this opportunity to advise most more specifically Honorable Gladys Chule and the other leaders with whom they have dared criticize the Catholic bishops that they should go slow on their attack on the Catholic bishops and the church leaders whenever we speak against corruption in this country. Honorable Chule must go slow on her chest thumping and boisterous utterances against the people she considers anti-government. Government does not belong to the likes of her, and they should not claim monopoly of wisdom in any way. She should also not be mesmerized by her close proximity to the president. Denials of the obvious is a symptom of insensitivity, melodrama, and utter failure to address the issues affecting Kenyans. We are soon going to call for a national prayer to call all corrupt people into account and for those who fail, we will courageously declare a curse upon them because they are the people that are denying Kenyans what they rightfully deserve by taking more to their own coffers and refusing to share what God has given to be shared by all Kenyans in this country. We therefore make these irreducible demands to the office of the president. We demand a publication of all the people who have been convicted or charged of mega corruption cases in this country. Secondly, we demand from the president a publication of all state appointments he has made since he took over the office before and after the creation of the broad-based government. This will enable us to be able to assess from his uh, desk whether there are traces of corruption in the appointments and fairness in sharing uh, positions of leadership in this country and Kenyans may be able to get uh, confidence in the manner in which they have done those appointments. 
because that is an area where we've always raised issues in the manner in which the appointments are made. Thirdly, we demand the publication of the current state of employment and financial obligations of the staff at the State House, including the paid prayer warriors that belong to the State House uh, list of employees. We also demand a report on the foreign travels that the President promised would be cut. There was a promise to cut down expenses on travels. We are yet to see an evidence that that is actually being done. We also demand the status of the office of the first and second ladies that the President publicly stated would be abolished because they are unconstitutional and expenditure in those areas remain unconstitutional. We need to know the status of that promised action. We also demand that the government revokes the unpopular model that segregates the unpopular funding model, model that segregates our university students into economic bands and revert back to the old university funding model that was not discriminatory. Seventh, we demand that the government immediately implements the university lecturers CBA to allow normalcy to our universities. It is quite unfortunate that universities are not uh, running as they should, yet our leaders sit pretty in their offices thinking they are leading Kenyans. Quite unfortunate and regrettable that a leader to their status would keep a blind eye on this very, very crucial issue of university lecturers or university workers. Finally, we demand an official statement from the President on the state of the appointment of the new IEBC commissioners. Kenyans cannot continue to be treated without an IEBC, a very, con a very crucial uh, constitutional uh, commission that needs to be operational. Many, many constituencies do not have representation. Uh, an example that many people know, appointments are made, uh, like for me in Ugunja, I'm not represented now because my MP had been appointed to become a CS. Today, we cannot have elections in that area. Other constituencies went ahead of us. Uh, wards are there that cannot, be, uh, cannot get their representation simply because there is no IEBC. So let the president come out and tell us what is the state and where are we moving and for how long will Kenyan stay without an IEBC? Because many things seem to be, uh, people seem to be silent and focusing on many other things, but such crucial commissions are not are being addressed. Let it be addressed. Thank you. I'm David Cordia, the Anglican Bishop of Bondo. I'm the one coordinating this press conference. You have heard what we have said. We have touched on fundamental issues affecting the nation. We have touched on education. We have touched on security. We have touched on health. And we have also addressed the president putting forward certain demands that he has to meet. What I want to say on behalf of all of us is that we are not actually pleading. We and we cannot and will never be cowed into silence. Kenya belongs to all of us. And when something is wrong, we have the right to address the nation on those issues. And I want to say how grateful we are to the media. You had been standing on the side of the marginalized. 
And without you, no one would actually know the atrocities we have witnessed taking place in different parts of the country. Continue to be the mouthpiece of the Kenyan people. So Kenya needs, in conclusion, Kenya needs a government that is sensitive to the plight of ordinary Kenyans. We need a government that understands the limit of people's capacity to bear the burden of excessive taxation. Kenyans need an alternative voice that can keep the government on check. Just as we had said, the opposition, especially in this country today, they have been silenced. We only hear of lone voices which may not have impact, may not even pick the government to see things differently. Kenyans need to be treated with dignity and their voices must be respected. Kenyans need to appreciate the value for their taxes through prudent, transparent, and accountable expenditure. And in this case, the report by the Auditor General and Controller of Budget must be given weight at whatever cost. Otherwise, it's becoming a ritual exercise that every moment the Auditor General will issue a report and that's the end of the story. We interrogate the report and that's the end of the story. This should be a reason why even the President must stand trial if his office is found to be misusing public fund. People were rejoicing when Gachagua left. Maybe that's the beginning of a new revolution. Kenyans need to be respected, not to be subjected to fear of reprisals for their divergent views. So we must stand firm, and as church leaders from this region, God has given us that mandate to speak on behalf of the voiceless. God bless you. That marks the end of our press statement. We are now free to invite questions, if at all you have. Just yes, for, the, for the sake of record purposes. And I don't want, but I will not get tired explaining this thing, because this is what I've explained severally. Whenever I meet you, I always explain this. Church did not support the president, but a section of some mongrels who thought that by associating with the president, they would gain something out of it. They are the ones who stood with the president in campaign. As a church, we don't campaign for anybody. I tell you, even in this region, we never stood up even to stand with, with the, the, the candidate that stood in our region. So please understand what the church is. It's not the church as a, as, as a Catholic, as an entity, national entity. Those who are sections of some people, like even ourselves here, we stand here. If he decides to go his own way, he is not the church, he is himself. But using the church as a bait for personal interest. I think I've explained it. We never So for it. future, you, you use the term some church leaders or yeah. some churches. <laughs> Don't just brand us yeah, all yeah, as yeah. the church. Use yeah. some. That's not us and we'll never be. We know who called us. Yeah. Maybe I wanted to say something. And every time we are going for election, we take time to pray. We take time to ask God to guide us to get a good government. So in times of election, you will find us very committed to pray for leadership. No one person in particular, but we ask God to give us direction so that we get good leaders. Because we know if we get good leaders, the people will rejoice. If we get bad leaders, we will suffer. 
You ask what went wrong. When the government is elected, we have expectation. Now our expectation has turned out to be our problem because they are not meeting our expectation. This is a government that has tendency of oppressing people. It's a government that has a tendency of lying. And this cannot go well with the, with the church, so to speak. There can be one, two, three uh, clergy who are supporting them blindly. But we can all see the citizens are crying. Those who are called Mamamboga, the Boda Boda, they are nowhere in the state house. But they were told they will be there. So this cannot allow us to say that things are right. And this is what has gone wrong because we are not seeing the promises that were made. The, in the hospital, people are dying. Education is almost going to zero. We cannot sit back and pretend that nothing is happening. Okay. Yes. Yeah.